Yetta, don't take it personally. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. Hello, we've created for you free access to over 503 Life's Inside Track episodes where we share insider tips, how to make house home, how to even have life exponential. And the great news is you can get access to them from home, from the office, or even on the go. How can I not take it personally when it's personal to me as to how you speak to me or when you don't listen to me or when I, I don't like how you treat me? How can I not take that personally? Because it's not usually about you. Right. So in this episode, what we're going to learn is that most of the time, it's not actually about the person that's getting the so-called, I'm going to call it slap in the face Ooh. or the being avoided. <laughs> or the being what feels like ignored, or the whatever it is that feels like it's coming at oh, you. Oh, I got a good word. You feel like you're being dismissed. Ooh, that is one of does my- that touch a pain point? It does touch a pain point, and I'll keep a smile on my face right now, <laughs> so that I don't have to touch the pain in this moment too much. And yet there is a sense, so what we're gonna learn is how to navigate that on right. both sides of the fence. And the first, insight to it is because most of the time the things people do that feels like it's to you like when ken dismisses me he isn't it, it is affecting me so i don't want to eliminate the fact that it does affect me except he's doing it for himself because maybe the thing i want him to deal with is something that is uncomfortable for him to deal with so he's doing it to protect himself not necessarily to hurt me. Thanks. That's perfect. I think we can end the show right here. Thanks for that acknowledgement, Yetta. <laughs> so Ken, things are done. We're not done because there's a little more unpacking because maybe you, like us, have found yourself in a situation where you know the other person is really good hearted. Like I know Ken is good hearted. After 40 odd years of journeying together, I got that he's good hearted, except it doesn't always feel that way. That's not always the way it comes out. Why are you silent? Because you're making me sad. <laughs> <laughs> so there actually are tears in his eyes. So if you're not watching the video version of this, you might want to go on our YouTube channel, Double Decker Life, and watch because it's kind of fun to watch the emotions come mm. that we didn't think were going to come. Yeah, because when we've you work through this. Well, when you talk about somebody's heart, right? Mm. And my heart is to love you, to cherish you. And then when I do things that are selfish to protect me, selfish to defend me, selfish to blame others, selfish to do all kinds of different things, then that affects you, the person that my heart loves so much. Right. That's a little bit emotional, it touches the emotional side. And so maybe that's happening for you. And so you can pause, you can turn us off for a little while, come back to it later. You don't have to keep going. So we're going to keep going. Unless you're on the radio show. If oh, you're yeah. listening live. Oh, yeah. Well, if you turn us off, we won't be bothered. No, we won't be back. bothered. We'll be totally good. You can come back to the recorded The good news episode. is we don't know whether you watch or not, so you won't offend us. <laughs> exactly. And so... What we've learned is that because they're not out to get us and we can trust that, we've learned that we need to figure out how to get into the cave for a moment, even if it's uncomfortable. Well, sometimes. Have you ever, have you ever had a situation mm -hmm. where someone's going through something very dark or very... Um, Just hard for them. Hard. You know, a, a parent passed away or a child passed away or a sib uh, sibling or a spouse and you mm -hmm. just go with that person and you sit down and you hold their hand or you put your arm around them and you don't say a word for like minutes it feels like sometimes hours, hours. yeah you just and and that's what they needed because words would be contrite so sometimes you need to just climb in the cave with the person and hold them until they're ready to come out of the cave. Right. And just sit with them, recognizing that the fact they're in the cave, even if it's something, well, in this case, it's 
certainly not related to the person that is sitting in the cave with them. But even when it is, sometimes all Ken needs to do or I need to do is to sit in the cave until we can regain our own composure. We don't need to be convinced. We don't need to be conjoled. We don't need to be forced. We don't need to be pushed. We simply need to be given our space so we can pray, we can pause, we can yield to our God, and we can just sit in what we already know to be true. We can come back to reality. Sometimes it's reality. Sometimes it's just coming back to something that serves us versus the state mm. that we might be in that's not serving us in the moment. And sometimes it does serve us for a moment. Yeah. And as we talked in the first episode around, my first go-to is a solution. Like, And most men are like that. If another man comes to me and tells me a problem or they have sadness or whatever, they have anger, I'm probably going to do something immediately to cause that person come out, right? Yes. Yeah. But with you, what I needed to do is make you feel heard and understood before my solution could be accepted. That would be right. Yeah. And you may find that it's not just in your love relationships. It's not just in that intimate relationship. It's in your parent to child relationship it's in your sibling relationship it's in your co-worker relationship i was gonna say that it's even in it, the business oh, relationship it's in every relationship that we have that most of the time all somebody needs us to do is empathize with them is to listen for a moment to sometimes touch their pain as we shared in the first segment Sometimes it's relate to them for a moment so that they can feel that they are seen and supported and special and safe. It's kind of like Stephen Covey said, and I read mm -hmm. his book. I can't remember all the elements of the keys all the to seven, success. And then seven, the eight. But, yeah. but the main one that I remember all the time is seek first to understand mm -hmm. and then to be understood. Right. And in the seeking to understand in any relationship, I know even in my workplace, and I think after 30 odd years of being a business owner and leader and doing work with teams that I would kind of have it all figured out. And yet I don't. Sometimes I have to pause, go back and remember these really basic principles of just yeah. allowing the person to express what they need to express and connect with them, not necessarily agree. And then I can offer a solution, how to do things better, how to do things easier. Do you find that too, Mr. Absolutely. Decker? Absolutely. Even around the boardroom table, like I sit on the Ottawa Real Estate Board. Yeah. I sit on the board for Solid Rock, and around those boardroom tables, sometimes you can have heated discussion about ideas or values or things that people think a direction the company okay. should be going, but maybe you disagree with that. And we can send the value, the message that we value their opinion, right. we value them, and we're not disagreeable, but we disagree with their way forward. Right. And so the trick is, and it's maybe not a trick, maybe it's a tip. So the tip is that you want to be able to relate to them even more than the thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us and growing alongside us because we're passionate about helping families grow in their businesses and in their lives. Forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team.